So as some of you may have known, if you joined us uh, earlier uh, two weeks ago, we were doing a bit of a Simcoe webinar series here. And uh, two weeks ago, we did the Simcoe edit. Today, we're going to touch on the Simcoe DNC Max. And uh, this is just a quick screenshot of some of the family of products that Simcoe has to offer. We will be uh, continuing on with this webinar series in, in future weeks with uh, NC Base and uh, MDM. So just a bit of an intro here before we kick things off um, and pass it over to Andre to really show us the meat and potatoes of everything. Simcoe uh, DNC Max is uh, built on, on top of Simcoe Edit, um, as we touched on last week. But basically what it does, it just gives you full control over your program transfers. Uh, you know, not just for CNC machines, but uh, other machines in your facility as well. Uh, but the main thing is, you know, the configurability and the scalability of DNC Max. So DNC Max can be put on one, two uh, CNC machines all the way up to, I think, 4,000 is the max. But um, and, and we'll go through this a bit further and you'll see the machines that um, and the different configurations that we have. But, um, you know, this is for not only large shops, but it's for small shops as well. So we just have a couple of screenshots here on, on the right, and uh, it just sort of shows you sort of what's happening. Um, these are the, this is the stuff that you can monitor on your DNC clients. You can, you know, actively see what is happening uh, on, you know, for this example with machine A and machine B, uh, the sending and receiving and, and all of the info that's being passed back and forth. And you can see that on, on a larger screen as well. Uh, let me just go to the next one. So just wanted to give a bit of a, a configuration, if you will, uh, that is an example of a, a shop floor and kind of the, the basics of what uh, the Simcoe DNC Max setup would be. Um, so as you can see here, we've kind of got the storage and backup server. Everything is networked via switch. We have the DNC Max server here. And then from the switch, you know, you have your CAD room, your programming room, your CAM room, and everything's networked together. So we've got three machines set up in a bay over here. Everything's connected via Ethernet coming out into the shop floor. We've got a, another switch here with a DNC client. This is where you can see the visual stuff that I showed on the previous page. And then again, further networking out to a wireless system in a bay over on the right and then further networking coming into a server and then rs232 into some of your legacy cnc machines so this just gives you a kind of a, a brief overview of what a shop could look like and how a dnc would system would be connected a little bit of a screenshot here just to touch on some of the benefits of you know what simcoe dnc max you might be asking how can i utilize this and um you know, these are just a few of the benefits, but obviously touched on the fact that you can network your CNCs, PLCs, or robots. It can work with your file. So if you have an existing DNC system in place that's a little out of date and you're thinking about updating, we can utilize your existing files and NC programs that uh, might already be around. You can um, access your programs immediately. Uh, so there's no waiting around. The, if there's a programmer set up by a remote uh, requests those programs can be downloaded loaded there's no walking around things like that um i touched on the the remote request we did touch on that slightly la uh, on our last uh, simple edit webinar but the main thing here with this remote request is what's nice is you have a programmer he's at the control can actually type in a code and pull down the program there's no need to walk to the cam room the cad room uh, where you might have a server, have your computer set up and ready to go before you can send and all those good things. Um, the remote request, I think, to me, is one of the key features of DNC. Um, just, so, you know, file transfers, port monitoring, system administration, all of it is handled in, in the interface with the, uh, the DNC client. And, of course, uh, I touched on this, it's a scalable solution. So if you have it set up right now for four machines, you add two more, you just have to, have to add a couple more ports and you're off to the races. 
So some key features here, just to touch on, um, just a few of them. The the fact that it's uh, it's integrated with the Simcoe Edit. So if you're using you know Simcoe Edit Pro right now, the standalone version, the interface that you're used to seeing is exactly the same. You're just adding in another tab for the DNC Max. Uh, for the administrators, um, you know you have full control over what users can access and uh, and and change and things like that. Um, and then carrying on with that, you have the ability for versioning control. So if you're modifying a program at the machine, changing some code, you have the ability, the, the operator has the ability to send that back in. It sits in quarantine and the administrator can review and send that back in and save it with a, a different version. And then that way you have the latest uh, NC file for any time you're running that program in the future again, you'll, you'll know for sure that that's the latest most up-to-date program. Uh, and then of course, you know, another neat feature with the, the DNC is the ability to drip feed. So if you have a machine in a control that just doesn't have a large enough memory, you can control and have this set up so it'll drip feed for you, you know, whether it be 10 lines of code at a time, 20, 30, whatever your machine can handle. Um, just some more graphics here, just to show you sort of up close what a, a sort of a wired setup might look like. DNC Max server, Ethernet cable connected to your cam, uh, and then it goes out into a uh, box here, and then you've got your RS-232 uh, going into your CNC machines. And this is, a, you know, a typical wired setup. If you want to, and you have the ability, uh, good wire. Uh, wireless sort of access and signal, you can set up the same thing, except it's wireless now. So this kind of grants you the ability to, if you're, you're moving machines or adding machines, you're not having to constantly pull wire. Uh, if you're changing the configuration on your shop floor, you have the, the luxury to, to be able to do that. Uh, and then uh, lastly here is a bit of a sort of a, complex uh looking picture but what it is is it's a hybrid setup um you know similar to to the pictures we looked at before but what you've got here is just showing you how if you've got legacy machines um or if you just happen to have you know the ability to wireless in certain areas or whatever the case may be you have the the hybrid ability to have both wireless and your legacy machine set up here so just a little picture to show that graphically. And then lastly, here's just a quick picture on some of the hardware uh, that we utilize in different situations. You've got your your, your single port here, multi-port there, and then uh, some wireless. Okay, that's it for me. I will pass the baton over to you, Andre, or you can grab. Uh, yeah, I can grab it. Uh... There we go, and then I'll show my screen number two. There we go. Everybody see my screen now? Yeah, I'm just having a look. Everything I see looks good. All right, good. So, um, like Lee mentioned, uh, the uh, DNC Max software is really like the cornerstone of all the uh, Simcoe product uh series so uh it connects to simco edit but it also allows you to gather data for uh, uh mdc and it works also along with nc base which we'll cover in an upcoming webinar so today we're going to focus more on the dnc side of things which is not fairly easy to demonstrate when you're not actually connected to a machine but i'll do my best so that you get the, the main idea here so um, the main benefit of DNC Max uh, server or uh, software compared to the Simcoe Edit in terms of uh, machine communication is like what Lee mentioned is that it monitors in, in both send and receive all the time on multiple machine at the same time. So you can have uh, programs being sent and received by different machines simultaneously without any issue, whereas Simcoe edit, you're only limited to one machine at a time and you have to wait for this specific transfer to be completed before sending or receiving file from another machine. 
So uh, just to uh, quickly demonstrate this, I'm gonna uh, kick in or simulate four different transfer that I'm sending out to a virtual uh, COM port that I have uh, enabled on my computer. So you can see the program has been sent out to the machine and in the log here we can see uh, how many times the uh, or which program has been sent by uh, and at what time directly uh, over here um uh, next thing that uh we want to mention is that we're not limited to uh, rs-232 protocol of communication we also work with uh, directory monitoring such as uh, file share folder. We can also work with uh, FTP server. We can work with the focus protocol for transfer. Uh, there's also uh, hide and nine uh, transfer. Uh, we can work also with a uh, holder windows controller, which are uh, not really appreciated on the latest network configuration in terms of lacking security uh, protocol. So Simco has developed a, it's their own protocol, uh, which is called BK Trans to allow communication, uh, secured communication between those older Windows versions uh, control and the newer platform. So, uh, and it's all machine specific. So like in here, I have machines that are connected through uh, COM ports. Uh, these ones are connected with uh, network uh sharing like directory monitoring setup i have some ftps so and it, it doesn't really matter they're all connected to the same server and it all work in, in parallel without any issues so um speaking now of the uh transfer sequence so you can utilize the uh main client in here and just directly go into the send button it will open up a window that is uh, which the location, the path where it's gonna look at is predefined for the machine. So you can have a specific path, a folder for each machine or they can all point out to the same folder. And then you can just choose whatever file you wanna send. You get the preview here and just say, okay. And then the file is gonna be sent out to the machine directly. But if you want to do um, something else, let's say you want to start from midpoint of a program because you have had some rework to do on it. Well, you can also use what we call the advanced send program. And uh, let's say I'm going to use this program here, program number 34. And in, um, in order to go along with that, I'll just take a few seconds to open it up in here the same program so this is the program that i want to send out to the machine and here i'm going to say well send it not only from the beginning but start only at tool number two so i'm going to say start at tool change number two i can start from a specific line number or block number or tool change and uh, i can also add extra lines at the beginning of the program. So before it actually reached the uh, tool number two, I'm going to ask him to send out an M01 with a ohm retract in Z. And I will also ask him to modify my feed rate and spindle speed to increase the feed rate by 50% and uh, decrease the spindle speed by 25%. So if we look here, we have spindle speed at 2500 and feed rate at 100. So when I'm going to send this out, we're gonna be able to look through the sent program here that it had in my M01, so we can see the beginning of the program. I had in my G28Z0, second tool, and then we can see my RPM is different and my feed rate is also different. So it altered the program as it was sending it through, uh, through the COM port uh, directly. And it proceeded with the rest of the program up until the end. So that's one of the nice feature that you have here. It is pretty interesting and it works both in full memory sand or if you do it with a, a drip feed or tape mode, you can just start the program from sending from anywhere else in the program and just 
keep going with your machining that way. Um, something else that I want to show you. So I've, I've shown you uh, the simple transfer. Let's go with uh, a few uh, directory monitoring stuff. So in this case, I have two different directory monitoring uh, configuration. Uh, I'll start with the other one. So I have this here and this here. So this window at the bottom is the uh, reference folder that uh, Simcoe is monitoring. And this window here is the machine side, okay? So we can configure the directory monitoring different ways, but one of them, which is pretty interesting, uh, in case you wanna monitor or uh, control which job can be mounted on the machine at any given time, you can uh, set them up to be, uh, to have the machine being a mirror of a specific folder. So for example, if I delete the content of this folder, for example, like this, eventually the system will automatically, it's already done. So system will automatically uh, update the content so that both folder always match uh, so that you, you always know which program can be run on the machine by the operator. Another way that we uh, can work is with what uh, is like a regular CNC machine where uh, you have, uh, you can have the operator do what uh, Lee mentioned earlier as the remote request. So for example, I have this file here, which is called remote NC, okay? Which all uh, in itself has a uh, specific and unique uh, pattern of character, which will be identified by the NC Max as a request. And then it will search on the server, uh, on the specific folder location for the file to send back. So uh, if I come back here and bring this up, so it's gonna be done on this one here. So if we look here, we'll be, we'll be having some entries here. So I have my remote file. I'm gonna drag it to my request folder. I'm gonna copy it there. So should receive the request, looked for it, and then sent it back to my machine folder. So the operator, the operator doesn't need to even go to the DNC Max client. All it has to do is change the remote request sample program and change the program number or name that you want to have. For example, I can change that and just make it so that it's sent back to the program. Like you punch the program out, the server will receive it, search for the file and send it back to the machine automatically. So that's pretty interesting feature and it works really well. And you can even specify subdirectories if you need to. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, something else that uh, we can do uh, that, it, that works on uh, different, uh, well, any kind of port is what we call some kind of translation, translation option where, uh, for example, if I have uh, this program here, 1058, uh, that I wanna keep open here, just so that we have an idea, and I'll uh, add in here, I'm gonna go into uh, this monitor here. I'm gonna say, I wanna send out the file 1058. There we go. So it's gonna be sent. If I look at my folder now, it's in here and if I open it up and I compare both files, uh, this one here. So this one is the one that has been sent on the machine. This one is the one that is on my server. So my server copy. And what we can see is that I add uh, my uh, DNC max configuration to look for any M6 command and make sure that they are labeled as M06 with the common tool change next to it. So it's gonna do that for every occurrence of the M6 and whether there's a space before or after doesn't make any difference. And I've also uh, changed 
the program so that it's uh, uh, using M99 at the end. So I'm using this program as a sub program instead of a main program. So this has been done without ever modifying the original file. It just has been done through the transfer process from the DNC Max side. So that's also pretty interesting. If you have, for example, similar machine uh, that use slightly different code, but they are easily, uh, uh, easily, easy to track. Sorry, I was looking for my, my word there. So if there are small changes, you can configure ports so that when it sees uh, some differences that it, it alters the format so that you can use the same file on multiple machines. Um, do, 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 do. Also, one thing that is uh, interesting, Lee mentioned that there is uh, a DNC Max uh, client interface through the Simco edit window, where you can see here the same information that I have on the same machines that I have, and you have this DNC Max tab on top where you can say, I wanna send the file that is in the current window to this machine, for example. So I'm just gonna hit uh, send here. I wanna send this file. Uh, I can't remember, that's the Simco. Yeah, yeah Simco 1034, so that's my file. I'm just gonna send it here. If I open this up, I see the file. It's being sent to the machine. But there's also uh, for a mobile device, okay? So it can be through a web interface like this on a computer, or it could be on any mobile phone, tablet that are connected to the same network as the DNC Mac server. Well, you have access to uh, your machine and same way I can open this up. Say I wanna send this job here, this one. I can look at it from here. And I can just say, okay, send that one. And it's gonna be sent right away. I don't even have to, I don't need a specific computer or a dedicated computer with the, uh, the client application to be installed to send program. And we can also do um, remote requests through barcode scanning if needed. If you have that information on end, we can configure that as well. Um, let me go through my notes, see if I've forgotten anything, but I think I covered most of it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Lee, do you have anything else you want me to talk about? No, I think that's great. Um, it gives it just a, a, a general, a good overview of sort of the, the functions, uh, how it can work, how you can utilize it. Um, the ability, you know, like you've shown the, the clients, uh, whether it be mobile or whether it be a client on the shop floor, I think for what it is, it's, um, you know, you've shown it quite well. Um, I would say that we could open it up to see if anybody has any specific questions on what sure. we've talked about or what Andre has just shown. Sure, sure. Yeah. If anybody has question, there's a question window on the widget, or it could be in the chat, or you can just raise your hand and we can unmute you. See if you want to talk to us a bit. Well, I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. Then I think it would be good if, if there is some questions, um, you know, after the fact, or if you, you know, are really interested in seeing what the Simcoe DNC can do. As Andre mentioned, it's kind of hard for this product. It's really hard to show uh, in a webinar, but it definitely gives you the idea of what can be done. Um, but to, to be specific, if you have some ser specific questions, um and you would actually even like to see it we could certainly set something up um we could come to your shop and and sort of show you how it works on one machine uh so you can get a real good idea on uh, what is a, available and, and what might work for you in your situation feel free to reach out to me um, everybody has my email address and i could put you in touch with the uh, corresponding rep for your area and yeah, we can just kind of 
get in the shop and show you how the stuff works. And see if it's something that uh, you can utilize. So I do not see anything, Andre, unless I'm missing no, anything. no hands up or anything like that either. So no, nothing, no, nowhere. Great. This one was short and sweet and to the point. Uh, thank you all yeah. for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time to to check these out. As a reminder, um, the next webinar that we have, I, I know I sent out the invite um, as a group, so everyone will have them in that original email. Uh, but the next webinar that we will be doing on the Simcoe family of products is going to be Simcoe NC Base. And uh, that one is set for the same time, uh, but uh, on May 24th. So yes. if you don't have the original invite, just uh, send me a quick message and I can send you the registration link. If uh, you're interested in it but can't attend, register anyways. That way uh, I'll make sure you receive the recording after the fact. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I'll also send out this recording once everything is compiled and we have it in a uh, YouTube link. But uh, if that's it, we can wrap it up. Thank you all for joining us.